Good morning everyone. Today is a very special day for all the Carmelites and for everyone who is associated with the congregation of Mother of Carmel as today is the feast of our beloved Saint Euphrasia who not only dedicated her whole life in the service of God but also in the service of poor and needy. As she once said, go in the search of the poor sheep who has strayed from his love and has become the refuse of the world. This shows her commitment and sincerity towards the people who are deprived and rejected from the society. Because of her kindness and devotion, she was able to heal a deaf, dumb and crippled child and save a woman from deposition by the devil. These incidents were nothing less than a miracle. This led to her canonization as a saint on 23rd November 2014 by Pope Francis in the Vatican City. You are my strength when I am weak. You are the treasure that I see. You are my that we should apply in our practical life. Rejoice in the divine love and seek for consolation. You will find there everything. I love my God and wish all the people do the same. Eternal Father, in order to establish your will perfectly, always and everywhere, I offer myself as a loving sacrifice. O oh my sweet God, even if you do whatever you like, I shall not separate myself from you. My Lord, show me your holy face, then I shall be saved. My only consolation is to reach my God. Oh, my holy Saviour, your will is enough for me. A day without any suffering for the Lord is a loss. Oh, my God, give me heart burning with the fire of your love. Lord, fulfill in me your holy will. Fulfill until my last breath. Mother Euphrasia was born on 17th October 1877 in a village called Kattur in Kerala. Her father, Eluva Thingal, chair for current and Tony was a businessman and her mother, Kunjithi, was a virtuous woman. 
On the eighth day of her birth, she was named as Rosa after her paternal grandmother. She had a younger sister named Kurutresia. Rosa was very fond of prayers. She used to find immense happiness during her prayers. In those days, it was customary for girls to get married in a very young age. Rosa's father too wanted her to get married. When Rosa's father told her that she has received a marriage proposal from a very wealthy family of their town, she told them that she wanted to become a nun and to serve the Lord Jesus all of her life. Rosa's father became furious and refused her. After a lot of compunction, her father agreed that instead of Rosa, her sister Kurutresia can become a nun. She didn't want to get married, but she was happy that at least her sister got a chance to serve the Lord. But after some days, her sister fell ill and died. The death of Kurutresia was unbearable to Rosa. After the death of her sister, her father agreed that she can become a nun. On October 24th, her father took her to the boarding house run by the Carmelite sisters. She was very happy there as she lived close to Lord Jesus. She used to fall sick very often and the authorities decided that she does not have the health to continue staying there. Once she had a severe attack and she was almost on the verge of dying. Then suddenly she had a vision of Jesus, Mary and Joseph. They told her that she will lead a long life as a nun and will die only when she gets old. She completed her studies. She was brought to a Carmelite covenant and was received as a postulant, taking the name of Sister Euphrasia of the Sacred Heart of Jesus. Once, Mother Euphrasia asked, What happened, my dear? Why are you so sad? Sister Gaspar replied, Mother, they're asking me to leave the convent. They say it is difficult to find a cure for my disease. They have also called my father to take me back home, but I don't want to leave. Mother Euphrasia said, Don't worry, my child. You should first go to Mother Superior and ask her to let you stay here for nine more days. Also tell her that you are willing to leave if your health is not improved in the next nine days. Sister Gaspar took permission and went back to Mother Euphrasia. Mother told her that you have to recite nine rosaries a day for nine days. Doctors who diagnosed Sister Gasper had found that her food pipe was getting thinner day by day. That's why she was unable to eat or drink. But Sister Gasper prayed earnestly to the Lord. On the fourth day, she was able to drink rice soup easily. And on the ninth day, when her parents arrived, she was able to eat normal food without any difficulty. Everyone saw this and said, it is a miracle. Indeed, it was really a miracle. Here is another instance of St. Euphrasia's miraculous healing. One day, a lady named Palikal Kochu Mariam came to her seeking help with her constant headaches. She consulted many doctors, but none of them were able to help her. Mother Euphrasia then took her to her room and rubbed some oil on her forehead. She was praying while she rubbed this oil and never again did Kachumaryam had to worry about her headaches. She was completely healed that day. As time passed, Mother grew older. By the time she was 75, her body became very weak. One day, while she was returning from a meeting with Father Louis CMI, she suddenly fell to one side of the ground. She was paralyzed that day and started to experience loss of memory. She was unable to speak as well. The news of mother's sickness spread like wildfire and people from distant places came to see her and sought her blessings. Even though mother couldn't speak, she received all of them with a smile. On 29th August, 1952, mother's health became even worse and Reverend Joseph Chitlapillai arrived to perform her last rites. There were many sisters praying for mother next to her bed. By around 8.40 in the night, in the prayer-filled atmosphere, mother's soul departed the earth and at the very same moment, 
the bells of the Cherulium Covenant began to ring by itself. Her body was buried the next day and was placed in the first tomb of the top row. Queen Euphrasia endeavoured to lead a life of constant prayer and of devotion to the Sacred Heart of Jesus, becoming known to many people as the Praying Mother. Saint Euphrasia grew in humility, poverty and holiness as she completely obeyed the will of God at every moment. Whoever approached her, she helped them with motherly love and good advice. We should learn from her that though life has many obstacles, we should have faith on God, He will surely help us. Now we will be presenting a beautiful dance prepared by our classmate.